King Carrot Diamond, but it was from somebody they hated. So they offered them $10 for it. And then somebody else comes in and uh, and it gives this little tiny piece of costume jewelry from their long lost aunt who they were so in love with, but who, and they offered her ten million dollars for it. Of course, that <laughs> that doesn't work in real life. Sentimental pawn shop. The funny. sentimental pawn shop. We pay for <laughs> sentiment because pe- people always say, "Well, for that, if, you know, if it's only worth that amount, I'll keep it because it means more to me than that." And and I've actually learned that sometimes it means that it's mean worth more to them than that if sentimentally. What it really means is you're just not offering me enough money. You mm. know, it's like I yeah. offered somebody I offered somebody fifty five thousand dollars thirty thirty years ago for a Harry Winston necklace. Whoa! And uh, she said, "For that, I'll give it to my grandkids." <laughs> she walked away yeah. from fifty five k. Well, wow. we, we we went into negotiation. We did some research. Man. We ended up offering her almost double that wow. when we when we found a buyer. So so just because somebody says it, it, you know, she'll give it to the grandkids. Believe me, nobody's giving a fifty five thousand dollar necklace to their grandkids. Right, right. I didn't think so. Uh, and it, determining the value, Barry, uh, an appraisal is key, right? You have to have a, a professional appraisal. Well, let's let's call it an evaluation. Okay. You know what what to appraise when you're going to sell an item. They're not appraising it for um, for retail value. They're they're evaluating it, or you could say appraising it, but they're not giving you an insurance appraisal. They're giving you really a fair market value if they're a reputable person. So an appraisal, you need appraisals on your on your um, valuables for uh, the most important reason is because the appraiser is actually bound by ethics rules. Mm. So, you know, and, and we're members of the appraisers, uh, uh, ASA, American Society of Appraisers. So there's uh, there's a governing body that, that keeps an eye on you guys, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, but, 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 you know, it's not, it's not guide, guided by legal laws. It's guided by ethics laws. Gotcha. Okay. So, so ethically, we have to put a value and the purpose of the value on our appraisal when we're doing a written appraisal or a verbal appraisal. So in, when you're going to sell something, you're getting a, an, a, an evaluated offer, and, and you're not really getting a, an appraisal for your, for your records. You're getting an offer. So the difference is when you're getting an appraisal and you're paying for services, you want this ethically to be correct at the retail replacement value. Yep. What would it cost to replace it today? What would it cost to go out and buy this or remanufacture it or find one like it? Gotcha. Are modern collectibles, Barry, it just seems like modern-day collectibles don't carry the value or uh, have as much value as you think about from, from decades ago, you know, baseball cards from the 30s and comic books from the 50s and 60s. Is this day and age of mass production that we lived in, has, has that sort of driven down the value of collectibles just because there's so many of them? Well, it's not, it's not the quantity of collectibles that's driven down the value. It is the availability or what we say supply and demand. When, when I was a kid, my parents were in the antique business, and they collected Royal Dalton figurines when they were retired, or not my parents, but the, but the figurines. Um, when they when they stopped making them, that's what retired means in figurines, and the values would go up. So these uh, these figurines were being sold for between 150 and 250 dollars, and as soon as they stopped production, they would go up 100, 150, 200 dollars. Mm-hmm. What happened is, and you had to search for these, and you had to look for them, and you had to go to shows and antique shows. Now you turn on the computer, and you don't find one. You don't find two, you yeah. find 10 and 20. Right. So these are now worth under $100 each. And, you know, and, and you would have thought that they would be worth three and four and five and $600 each, but the, the, the reverse happened. I, so I, I all, think about people, and their beanie babies from decades ago, like, oh, I'm yeah. going to collect beanie babies and retire, and most of the people just, just gave them away because the value never really, really soared on those particular uh, toys, it seemed like. Right. Right. Well, the same thing. Well, that that goes in fads. You know, it's like uh, it's like the um, uh, the Cabbage Patch dolls. Right. You couldn't find them, so the price went up. Then all of a sudden, there was no demand. Gotcha. Gotcha. So same thing. Same thing happens. Where's the demand? If there's a demand, there's value. You know, if there's no demand, forget about it. If you found diamonds all over the world, mm. anywhere in your backyard, they wouldn't have any value. Excellent point. And don't forget, the free evaluation days uh, continue every Tuesday in National Estate Jewelers on Route 18 in East Brunswick. And Barry has, kindly enough, has extended uh, for one more week the $25 cash bonus 
Uh, when someone sells you $250 or more, Barry, it's a $25 bonus for that? That's right. Just just mention Bert Barron at WCTC, and we will be happy to say to do it for you. Hey, make it happen then. Very good. Barry, great to talk to you as always, and uh, we'll chat again next Tuesday, my friend.